Good day, every day. My uh, good day, everyone. My name is Christine Painter, and I'm the head of compliance at FaceFace. Today, I've got the privilege to discuss with you compliance in Africa in a nutshell, a few curveballs that we've got within the compliance environment, and then the benefits of choosing FaceFace for payroll compliance. Now, firstly, we're going to look at compliance in Africa as well as the dangers of non-compliance. Now, Africa is not for sissies, is a phrase that is often used by businesses who operate in various regions in the continent. Now, Africa is made up of many different com continents, each with its own culture, as well as rules and regulations that present both challenges as well as opportunities. Now, Africa specifically is made of, out of 54 countries with 1.4 billion people as of 2021. It is the second largest and the second most populated continent in Africa, after Asia, a continent overall after Asia, and it accounts for about 18% of the world's human population. Now at Pace Space, we've got 44 countries in our footprint, 43 countries is in Africa, and one country in the Middle East. Now to operate in so many countries across Africa comes with a few complexities, but there is one thing that you can be sure of, the only constant is change. Now, the reason for the complexities is the frequent changes in legislation and regulations, which results in the greatest payroll challenge, and that is staying compliant. Now, if I only look at pay space and in terms of the statutory changes that occurred during the past three months, in Africa, there was 13 annual legislative updates that we had to update on pay space. Within Africa, with in the last three months, there's three new statutory reports that was rolled out that we need to implement on the system. There's been changes on 29 of the statutory reports across Africa that we need to update on the system to make sure that these reports are 100% correct when customers submit to the revenue authorities. Over the past three months, the compliance team has released 149 compliance related tasks. Now, what are the dangers of non-compliance? A wise person once said, if you think compliance is expensive, try non-compliance. Now, while most of you might know the importance of staying up to date with new and changing legislation and regulations, many find it near impossible to do. With the frequent changes in legislation and the complexities of regulations, many companies can be non-compliant and have really given little thought to the repercussions. Now, to avoid non-compliance, keeping up to date with legislation is absolutely essential. And that is because non-compliance can result in hefty fines and sanctions, but it can also result in more damaging consequences, such as criminal charges, reputational damage, and loss of opportunity. Next, we're going to look at some curveballs within the compliance environment. Now, in compliance, there's never a dull moment, and we regularly need to deal with these curveballs. Let's look at one of them. The first one is the continual changes in regulations and legislation, which includes your Go Green policies that is enforced by governments. Now, this causes rapid and complex software development to combat non-compliance. Another curveball that we are often faced with is late promulgations that include your backdated effective dates, causing abnormally tight deadlines, software challenges with retroactive recalculation, and then of course, a heavy administration burden on the users. Let's use Parishas as an example. In August, there were statutory changes that were promulgated with an effective date of July. There was an increased exemption on the travel allowance, which had to be backdated to the July period in order for the system to perform the correct calculations. Then another curveball that we are often faced with is when we roll out statutory changes, one needs to pay careful consideration in terms of your payroll pay dates. The impact of the changes that you're going to release is going to have on our customers. Keeping in mind when you release the changes, you need to know whether the customers have already paid the employees, have the payrolls been closed off, has the customer submitted their returns, 
And all of that needs to be communicated to the customers so that they understand what is required from their side and know what the impact will be when statutory changes are released. Now, another challenge we've got within the industry is when our revenue authorities released mid tax year updates, which causes reconciliation challenges. Now, let's just quickly look at two examples. Recently, Rwanda updated a new tax tables, meaning for Rwanda, we've got two tax tables that we need to apply in one year. Another example is Zimbabwe. Now, in Zimbabwe specifically, you've got one tax table that needs to be applied from January to July, and then a second tax table that needs to be applied from August to December. That is quite complex to make sure that you accommodate for the two different sets of tax tables during the year. Another curveball that we've got in the industry is that the majority of our countries have tax years that run from January to December, which causes that your most critical annual legislative updates occur during the holiday season, when most of your authorities, your advisory houses, and your companies operate on skeleton staff. To get responses in terms of interpretations of new legislations, your promulgations, and all of that during this time, can be quite challenging. Then last but not least, we often need to deal with multiple interpretations of legislation and tax and administrations. Now in scenarios where multiple interpretations is allowed, it is absolutely key to have a payroll that allows for flexibility to ensure that you accommodate for the various interpretations that is allowed in the country. Let's look at Ghana as an example. In Ghana, in Ghana, we've got a SNIT contributions. One interpretation states that the SNIT cap should apply over all the tiers. And then there's a different interpretation that says your SNIT cap should only apply to tier one and not to tier two and three. Now, where the revenue authority accept different interpretations, it is very, very important to ensure that your payroll system has the flexibility to offer the different interpretations. Next, we're going to look at cloud payroll technology, specifically focusing on the advantages of choosing pay space for payroll compliance. Now, in Africa, it's important that customers need to have the peace of mind that many of the main challenges that they are faced with in Africa are taken care of. Now, this could range from accurately interpreting local legislation changes or releasing statutory updates timelessly for submission periods. Now your cloud payroll technology will automate your mundane repetitive tasks and it will improve compliance accuracy, efficiency and statutory reporting. Now the importance of what cloud software offers can really not be underestimated. Payroll managers need to know that we will take care of their needs. Now payroll businesses that are in the cloud struggle a lot with the constant changes that we are faced with in compliance. Now, effective payroll compliance strategy starts with using the best tools. The days of legacy software where manual sheets are necessary and need to need to report after the fact are over. Companies simply must have access to the information that they need real time to pinpoint the impact and to have the ability to make decisions quickly. Now, with the cloud software, your business will always enjoy the latest and greatest version that is up to date with legislative changes, which will enable the business to adapt and scale according to its specific needs. Now, when these statutory changes are made, customers can simply log onto their PaySpace account and see the updated statutory changes. Our statutory changes are deployed on a weekly basis to ensure that our customers always have the latest legislation available. Now, apart from the frequent deployments, certain statutory changes, for example, your tax table updates, your limit updates, your rate updates, can be made available in production instantaneously without the dependency on the next deployment to production. The PaySpace system is designed in such a way that your statutory elements with a high velocity of change can be updated at bureau level without the need for code changes that need to be deployed into production. Next, we're going to look at the research methodology that we that we follow in PaySpace, as well as our five-tier advisory approach. 
Now, our team or our research team can basically be seen as PaySpace's internal tax advisors, and we are responsible for the formulation of theoretical tax applications. Our team conceptualizes and communicates tax. Now, we've got strategic relationships with, our, with multiple tax advisory providers to ensure that we give the best possible solution and that we are legislatively compliant in all 43 African countries as well as UAE in the Middle East. We have formed and nurtured a strong alliance with the PAGSA, SITE and SAPA to inform us of any current or upcoming changes in South Africa based tax legislation. We also add our comments and our suggestions to the draft legislation bill as well as the easy file software to be taken into consideration for any future amendments. Now let's look at the five tier advisory approach that we follow within PaySpace. These tiers are followed based on the complexity and the magnitude of the query. The first tier that we've got is our internal compliance. And that is where our compliance research analyst will deploy research methodologies by conducting independent investigations and confirming legislative interpretations with our in-country governing bodies, as well as our tax advisors. Our team will verify the sources of information and cross-reference that against the legislation. Our second tier is our PaySpace customers. Now we've started user collaboration drive with some of our business partners and customers where we obtain invaluable tax updates and in-country best practices through our collaboration drives with these customers as well as the audit firms. The third tier is our tax authorities and governing bodies where we communicate with our in-country tax and revenue authorities, also the, our governing bodies, such as our national funds, our social securities, training authorities, as well as compensation commissioners to get the latest statutory changes. Our fourth tier is our regional advisory firms that provides us with advisory services for clusters of countries, for example, West and Central Africa, who will then in turn have an alternate network of experts. And fifth, but not least, is our in-country partners, which is a network of our in-country pay-space business partners that will assist us with real-time statutory change alerts to obtain a practical in-country application of the law. Okay, then the last item that we're going to discuss this morning is what is the compliance communication tools that we use to communicate any compliance compliance or legislative matters to our customer base. The first communication um, or document that we've got available is our infographics. Now that is basically a document that is available on our website with a summarized overview of the most significant tax legislation administered by the Revenue Authority. Now let me quickly show you an example of an infographic for Mauritius. Infographic will typically be four or five pages and really just give you a summary of the tax administered in that country. Next thing we're going to look at is our product user guide. Now, the product user guide is the guides that we've got available on the system to aid our users in the understanding and the application of legislative compliance. It is a practical guide that our customers can use during implementation, maintenance of payrolls, and then to troubleshoot any support queries. Let me quickly show you where you will be able to find your product user guides on the system. So when you log into your PaySpace account and you select a company that you operate in, when you're on your home page, you're going to navigate to your profile icon. From there, you can click on how can we help? When you're on How Can We Help, you can navigate to PaySpace Wisdom. And under your PaySpace Wisdom, there is a section for your compliance product user guide. We've updated 27 guides um, up to date. And the plan is to have all 43 countries available on the system by the end of this tax year. The next tool that we've got available on um, for communication is our compliance news feed. 
Now, if there is, for example, any legislative changes or updates that we want to communicate to the public on a regular basis, we make use of the compliance news feed. So this can typically be changes where there's proposed changes in the legislation, but it's not promulgated yet, or there's certain changes that still needs to be clarified with our advisors before we implement it on the system. Or in other instances, it can be important compliance communications that we want to share with our customers so that they are aware of the chat or that they are aware of some important information, even though it might not result in system changes. Let me quickly show you where you can find all the communication or the articles that we publish on the system. So again, from your main page, you can navigate via your profile icon. You're going to click on how can we help? And from there, under your page space wisdom, we've got a section for compliance news. And under the compliance news, you'll be able to see, for example, in Namibia, the mid-year budget review statements changes that we haven't implemented on the system yet, but available for the customers to see. Next, we've got our release notes and our preliminary release notes that I'll quickly show you on the system. Now, from a release notes point of view, to see all the legislative changes that we've updated on the system, you're going to click on what's new. Under your what's new that's available on the system, we've got a a tab for your new features and enhancement, and then a separate tab for all the legislative changes. Now, under your legislative changes, you've got preliminary release notes and you've got release notes. In terms of the preliminary release notes, that is all the release notes for statutory changes that we are going to release soon. So any changes that's not in production yet, but it is in development or in the testing phase will be available under the preliminary release notes. We can quickly just have a look at an example. There is changes to Kenya's iTax file. And when you open the drop down, you'll be able to see the changes that we are going to release in Kenya shortly. As soon as we've changed, we've released the changes into production over a weekend and we've tested it on a Monday in production, we will activate the release notes and you'll be able to see all the legislative changes under your release notes, under your legislative section. There you will be able to just open the release notes and see, for example, all the changes that we've introduced for a specific country. Next, what we've got available on PaySpace is our tax alerts. Now, the tax alerts is a compliance notice email that we send to all our customers when this new legislation that has been promulgated. A good example for when we'll send out our tax alerts is when there's new tax tables for South Africa that's been released or um, you know, the medical aid cap values have changed, which will, in, which will basically impact our entire customer base in South Africa. Then we'll send out clear instructions of any impact that it might have on our customers. We'll send the legislation and give some background on the changes. Then in certain cases, we also have some live events that with our customers as well as our business partners to go through big changes that we've released. A few, a few months ago, we've done a rebuild on Mauritius and introduced the new cumulative tax method. And because of the significant changes, we really do promote interaction of our customers and we allow time for questions and answers where our business analysts and testers can really get involved and, and clarify some of the questions that our customers might have. Today, we've got a session with regards to employment equity at 11 o'clock this morning, where we'll go through all the changes that we've released, that we've worked on during the last couple of months. And then last but not least, in certain cases, we'll also activate a compliance notice pop-up message on the system. If there is important compliance communication that we want to share with our customers that is country specific, there will be a pop-up message available on the, on the system just to notify our customers of the statutory changes that we've released or something that they need to be aware of. As I've mentioned earlier, we've got our product user guides, and by the end of this tax year, we want to have all 43 guides available. So this is just an example where we add a new product user guide and make it available on the system. We'll add a pop-up message so that all our customers are aware of it. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this session was helpful and that you are confident to trust Base with staying compliant. 
If you've got any questions, please reach out to the Pace Pace team and we'll gladly help where we can. Thank you very much.